Welcome to Aftermath, your source for WWE pay-per-view recaps. I am your host, the People's Champ Cal, and alongside me as always, I have my tag team partner, the Glamour's on Delisha. What's going on, Delisha? I turned on the microphone button. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Another Monday, another recap, but it's the uh, biggest recap of them all. Yeah, it's our actual season seven. I can look it up if this is season six or season seven for us, but it's our season seven finale. Um, we're not quite done with season seven, as you guys know. We usually have an uh, award show. We'll, we'll talk about that in the episode tonight. But uh, yeah, it's our season seven finale. We're talking about the biggest show, like Delisha was saying, WrestleMania forty, which is usually what ends all most storylines, if not all, uh, in that time. Then they're going to start a draft in a few weeks, I guess, and uh, start a whole new season. So we kind of go by WrestleMania as our season finale, as well as what sets up our season premiere of our next season. You know what follows WrestleMania. So, yeah, seven seasons. And, uh, you know, would you say this is a lucky number seven for you, Delisha? I guess so. Um, I mean, we've gotten some great uh, stories and matches throughout the last year to lead up to this moment. So, um, and now we are in a brand new era. Oh, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> he wasn't gonna let us. <laughs> but um but yeah, we are in as uh I think Walter well, said like to uh Stephanie said the triple H era. So you know? uh she did not say the triple H era, she said the Paul Levesque era because they gotta make sure they add enough another Paul because whenever they say when someone says Paul, I never know who they're talking about. Logan Paul, Paul Heyman, Paul Levesque. Man, just call him Triple H like you did. I, I prefer that as well. Uh but you know. They gotta start calling him Paul Levesque because he's official now. Um, <clears throat> yes, but you know, like uh, the one, one thing I start calling the Rock Dwayne Johnson, like because he's also part of the board too. So that's gonna suck. I'd rather just call him the Rock because everyone knows him as the Rock. Yeah, yeah. Everyone and still just, everyone still just calls him that. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it was uh, kind of like a bittersweet thing because you know it was in Philly. So like last time, a major pay per view of the Big Four was in Philly, I believe. Like we were there, so I mean, this time around it was a lot more difficult, more a lot more expensive than it could have ever been. So like, I I want to go, 
Uh, but like for me, like the card, like I was talking to you about this before, you know, it's, uh, CM Punk getting injured and Rock kind of being taken off the card in a, in a sense. Um, I, didn't, I didn't, wasn't really looking forward to this WrestleMania. I always look forward to WrestleMania, but like I didn't really find the card that appealing. Um, there were some surprises for me in, in types of how good the match, some of the matches were, but for the most part, I felt this mat, um, WrestleMania wasn't that good in my opinion. Uh, when I when I saw the card, but did love the hype? You gotta or what I felt at the end. Um, you know, we'll talk about it when we talk about our finishers. But Delisha, did when you saw the card, were you happy with the card? Was there someone you want to see more than others? Um, was there someone who's who was missing on the card that you wanted to see? Uh, yeah, um, I it, on the first look of the card. I for the most part, um, I was extremely excited because I knew one just because of who was involved. We we're gonna get some good matches. Um, there were some more storylines that I was invested in than others. Um, pretty much as usual, I felt we could have had uh more women's matches than only three. Um, but it is what it is at this point. But maybe that could change when it, in the next coming. The irony in that yeah. statement is not lost on me. Alicia wanted know, more female matches, but she didn't want to cover any of them except for one. Yeah. So, except for one, usually she's she, for a specific reason. Usually she's th like chopping at the bit to like cover these women's matches, but she sucked them on me. So maybe, maybe Delisha. Uh, I feel like you needed to pay attention to these matches more, so I made you. <laughs> yeah, I am glad. I am glad that you made me cover one of them because that that was pretty much a fantastic match. I actually like pop. I like, I never like pop when I um. Uh, well, this is gonna sound weird when I watch a women's match. But like I meant like in the sense of like cheer because I, like when I saw like, yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, maybe in the Saudi pay per view, Delisha, it'll be all women matches in like one men's match. That would be that would actually get me to watch. And and yeah, then we'll have to cover it because since we don't really cover the 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 Saudi pay per views, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I needed. I needed Tiffany on the card. Why was Sh Tiffany Stratton not on the card? Like Will think WrestleMania is outstanding, but Will thinks everything is that is terrible is great. Don't forget he. But yeah, uh, like Tiffany Stratton should have been on it. Um, so that was unfortunate that she wasn't on it. Liv Morgan, I, you know, I think they still need to like revamp her character because I don't know. She's like like whiny now, and I love Liv Morgan because she's she lives right, like, you know, she's from where I'm from. So like, I support her. I just want something for her character, something substantial. Cause even her even her title reign wasn't that significant in my opinion. But we have a lot to get to today, and. We, like the the raw after WrestleMania is usually the most important biggest of the year, so we kind of want to get in, done for that. The first match was for the oh my god, oh god, what are they called the women's world championship I think, featuring the women's world champion Rhea Ripley against the challenger Becky Lynch. Now before the match started, they told me Becky Lynch like fought like aliens and uh came from like just landed from space or something and she was sick and all that nonsense just to show her. Make an excuse in case she lost. It's because she did all this crap before the match and she was dying or whatever it was. Um, I kind I kind of think like I'll, I'm going to ask this question now, Alicia. You can think about it and then when we get to your analysis of it, let me know. Do you think that takes away from if Rhea Ripley wins? Do you think that takes away from her win? Like by saying, oh, her opponent was so you know like under under the weather or whatever you want to call it. She you know whatever like she, you know she didn't get to perform at her highest ability. So we'll, we'll get to that when we get to you, but just think about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Becky Lynch, I don't even remember what her entrance... Oh, she came out with this weird-ass outfit, but I guess she's married to Seth Rollins. It makes sense. Um, but Rhea Ripley came out with a, a to a uh, live performance by some band I don't know. Um, Felicia, do you, know, do you know the name of the band? Motionless, motionless in White? Yes, Motionless in White. like a, a punk rock uh, type of metal band. I, and she... I, I didn't know it was from Triton, which is like... Mm -hmm. Three, four hours from here. So I was like, oh, not, not, well, not local, but local to the state. <laughs> so she, but no, she's a, she's a really big fan of yeah. that. So, um, and she sang the lyrics to it as she walked out. It was a really cool entrance for her. Um, she she pretty much, I feel like she dominated the beginning of the match because using her strength, and like that's when they had to reinforce the fact that Becky Lynch was sick and not at 100% and all that crap. Um, but, uh, we dominated the early part of the match. Then Becky finally got some um, offense, and then she hit her patented leg drop off the top to the back of uh, Rhea Ripley's neck or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then <clears throat> she put on her one of her first 
arm bars slash disarmers because like she started with arm bars and flipped over to disarmers several times and started working on um Rhea's elbow uh much of the beginning of the match and Rhea really sold it Rhea sold it because you know her finisher being the riptide needs a lot of energy in her arm so um working on her arm was a smart move by Becky um but then while she had the disarmor on uh Becky put I mean, uh, Rhea picked up all of uh, Becky has deadlifted her and kept slamming her down on the mat like boom, 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 boom. And then they back, they went back and forth into like you know back and forth with some action. And then Rhea hit her, got her her uh, submission move on, which I think it's called the Prism Trap or something on her on, Be- on Becky. And then hit a Riptide, but um no, no, he tried to hit a Riptide, I think. And then Becky counts uh, uh counted that into a manhandle slam, which makes no sense because I feel like. The manhandle slam is supposed to be a variation of the pump handle slam, which is what a riptide is anyway. So, like, if anything, Rhea Ripley's move should be called the manhandle slam, but not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, after the manhandle slam, uh, Becky hit the manhandle slam. They were both laid on the ground for a little bit. They they finally got both back up and to the top rope. Uh, Lynch went for a su- uh, for a, like a super manhandle slam, but um, <clears throat> Rhea countered it into a riptide and then threw her against the the uh, turnbuckle again picked her up for another riptide and hit the second riptide and got the pin one, two, three, and Rhea Ripley retains her world championship. Uh, Delisha, your thoughts? I really um, enjoyed this match. I think these two put on a very good performance. Uh, I, I think that it was a good opener to show if they wasn't going to be able to close out the show due, due to the uh, bloodline storyline. Um, and I guess also to answer your question while I remember to answer it, um, I don't think Becky being sick or it being told that Becky was sick took away. Just because Rhea was already on like a monster run before this, and it's just kind of this is just extending her year long um run. Um, and also Becky still performed phenomenally, so it's not like she was um like and she may not, probably also to her she probably wasn't on her A game, but her B or C game was just as good. Of what she brought out for Mania. Um, I mean, I've never had strep throat, but I hear that it is horrible to deal with. So, or, and maybe, and just like I guess other things, it can affect people differently depending on, you know, how your system reacts to it. But yeah, I don't think it took away from the match or Rhea winning at all. <clears throat> I, I just, I just feel like Rhea. I feel like when she, I think the same thing happened with Charlotte too. Like Charlotte's like, oh, Charlotte has an injured leg or knee coming in, uh, so Rhea will be looking to like taking advantage of it. Like I feel like they're always giving people excuses. Like Rhea is a powerhouse. She is a great athlete. She is a phenomenal wrestler. Or a great wrestler. She's a phenomenal. That goes to one person. A great wrestler. Like I just feel like they don't need to make that excuse. She's a dominant force. So I don't think they need to say anything. You know, um, make. It could have been. They could have just said it after the fact. Right. That Jordan- yeah, that that I was just to say that I was say like they have press conferences after for a reason, so they just say it then. Um, don't take away from the mystique of the match by saying that kind of stuff. That's what I feel. So, yeah, I agree. They should say it at the press conference or after, maybe like not even at the press conference because that's gonna be an excuse. Maybe like report it, um, afterwards, like on like uh, like their website or something or you know Twitter or something like that. Our next match was a six pack tag ladder match for the undisputed tag team championships where the rule was the match did not stop until both tag team titles were removed from the, the from, from brought down from being suspended on top of the ring. It featured the Undisputed Tag Team Champions, the Judgment Day, represented by Finn Balor and Damian Priest against D-Generation X, featuring uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Um, the New Catch Republic, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Uh, A-Town Down Under, featuring... Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, Awesome Truth featuring The Miz and Our Truth, and New Day being represented by Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Uh, Delisha, I believe this is yours. So, as we always tend to do with like these matches that involve um, more than like three people, it's very hard to um, like try to like recap it, so to speak. So I'm just gonna hit some of the highlights. Um, also, there's like. Just like 12 people in the ring, so it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so I will start off by saying I kind of I did like um DIY coming out with like the re, uh, like the revamp like um DX 
Uh, it's Degeneration X Elite, sure. Arctrix yeah. has been like Degeneration X, so we go by. No, no, no. I'm saying, but they have the. No, no. I'm saying that those two members are Shawn Michaels and HBK. According to our truth, and he says his okay. truth only. <laughs> uh, well, they came out in their purple gear with the cowboy hat, and I think the only thing that was missing was a leather, a leather jacket. I didn't see any of that. Um, but <laughs> it also was funny that whoever was on the production truck for this one was messing up the entrances or either putting teams uh video package too early or not changing them once the, the other team came out i just thought that was funny <laughs> um, but a lot of like notable moments were um <laughs> our truth like he previously did on i believe on raw mistaking a match for a tag team match asking to be tagged in uh but instead of um dom Dom, Dom de Grisero, him and the Miz, uh, Miz his partner, getting the, the hot tag, so to speak, for um, them to come in. And then we had the team of New Catch Republic uh, showing how well they work as a team. So, I mean, they've technically been a team since they were like 14 and 16 years old. <laughs> but uh, Tyler Bate doing the airplane spin, um, I think it was Finn and the ladder. And then taking out all the numbers of the match. Um, Johnny Gargano with this, he, well, I think there was like two where he did a dive to the outside. I think he, I don't know if he overshot it, but he like almost hit the uh, the announce table. Or he, he, well, he did hit the announce table, but the way he landed didn't seem so fun. <laughs> and, but also doing, um, uh, I think that's so pretty soon see that with uh, Pete Dunne onto the table. Which had took them out for a while. Hi, Rose. And uh, and then, but also with again, New Catch Republic doing a um, uh, Miko on the top of the ladder. They can't hear me, baby. Yes, you have water. Sorry. <laughs> but also, our troops showing his um, idol John Cena some love by doing a, a bunch of his moves. And uh, pretty much Damian Priest was just in there to be the, the strong guy. Um, just, you know, choke stunning people and um, putting them through tables. Uh, we did get um, A-Town down under being able to take advantage of situation where people were not were outside of the ring to grab the SmackDown uh, tag titles, um, which they did try to go for the wall ones as well. But I think they got deterred by the New Day, and then they just weren't seen after that. Thank you. And then um, we had Jada McDonough, because of course someone from uh, Judgment Day would get involved with this match, uh, trying to hoist Finn up to get the Raw title so they could leave with something. Um, but then he got sent through a table, almost went through the barricade, just how far he was flying off that ladder. <laughs> And we wound up getting um, The Miz and R-Truth as the Raw tag team titles. Um, letting uh, R-Truth get his first WrestleMania win and his first title since, well, I guess technically since the 24-7 title, but a title that matters. Probably, I should look it up, but I don't know exactly the last time he held a title of note in WWE. Um it might have actually been the last time he was a tag team champion. I'm not sure. But overall, the match was pretty fun. Chaotic as a ladder match would be, especially involving 16. Um, I don't know where it would land on... I don't think it'll make one of the top 10 of all time ladder matches. But it was definitely very entertaining and a good showcase for some of the um, teams here. Because I think the, the veteran teams, as far as being on the main roster were just New Day and, I guess, Judgment Day at this point. And, of course, we had uh, Miz and R-Truth. But the rest were pretty much teams that had been put together on the main roster in the last, like, six months or so for a year. But overall, I did enjoy it. And this was one of the matches that I was looking forward to, like, the most for night one. What about you? Yeah, Will said that uh, he really enjoyed the match. And he said that um, he had the U.S. title in 2019. That's the last time, but yeah, um, I yeah I thought we I think before, um, WrestleMania, Will and I were talking in a in a PlayStation chat. We're saying that this might be the match of WrestleMania possibly, 
and like it, it, it really did deliver. Like I, you know, I don't like when the too many people are in the ring because I always say it gets sloppy. It was sloppy at some points, uh, but other than that, like it was, a, it was a pretty solid match with some really good spots. Um, like Will was saying, the the DDT that they hit uh, through the table and the the uh, double moon salts and stuff like that. Um, there were some really innovative moves uh, that we saw, and not only this match but the next match that Felicia's going to talk about in a little while. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I want to see um, Miz as a singles thing, but I do love our truth. So seeing him with our truth. Is not bad. Having them as tag team champions is gonna be fun for a little bit. As short as it rate, as short as that raid will be, um, I don't mind. It's just some good action. I'd love to see maybe uh them hold it till SummerSlam and then drop it at SummerSlam. That would be kind of cool. If not Survivor Series, uh, but I can't see that and do that long. But like, I think they don't have anything for the Miz. The Miz is so underused in my opinion. Um, they just put them in like joke roles and like hosting roles and stuff like that. Um, I know they're giving other people chances, but like I think Miz is coming towards the end, kind of like he's like in that Cena era where he's coming to an end. At least Cena got like several title shots left and right at the end, or like main event matches or whatever you want to say, call them. Um, I kind of want to see that for Miz, like he's in his twilight. He'll, he can still stick around and do you know hosting all that. That there's probably time for that after he retires, but while he can still physically do it, give him a good solo singles run, um, and you know. That's what I want to see. All right. The next match was a tag team match featuring um, Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio against Rey Mysterio and originally Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee was attacked on SmackDown, so he's replaced by... Is he just called Andrade now, or is he seeing Andrade Almas? I think they still just say Andrade. Okay, so just Andrade, yeah, so. And I believe... And, and just so you know, Gleesh and I split, split these matches on Friday afternoon... And believe it or not, they put four, Delicia has four matches the first night, and I have three, and they put all four Delicia's matches together. So, go figure. I'm pretty, I, I think they have a link to our text thread, and then they just be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not exactly, I, it is a kind of weird decision out of nowhere to um, have Dragon Lee come back specifically, back to the main roster, I mean, come back specifically for his supposedly first WrestleMania match, I believe, on as a main roster member, and then immediately be like, never mind. <laughs> um, so I, that is pretty curious the way that was like, I don't know if something had happened and they had to do that, or if something is just, I don't know. But anyway, um, give once again, given people in the ring, you have Rey Mysterio, Andrade, and Santos who are all, uh, I know Sa Santos is still is new to the main roster, but he's still a veteran who's been in in this game for a very long time. Um, and we also have Dom, who was pretty much made, he is made one of the biggest improvements of superstars from, like, you think about his very first match um, on, with uh, Ray to now as he is working for Wednesday. Pretty phenomenal, uh, if I do say so myself. Even He may not be the best wrestler in the ring, but he's, he's holding his own, especially as a heel. Um, pretty much, if you've ever seen a Lucha match you see, like, that's pretty much, they were giving all the great hits with Andrade, um, excuse me, I think this might have been his, is this his PLE debut since coming back? Outside of the Royal Rumble. Um, I guess that technically would be the PLE yeah. debut. Um, wait, is this, and then, I think this might have been his second or third actual, like, being in a match since being back, because they were doing a lot of, like, promo, pa promo packages beforehand. Um, and then, but we also couldn't disregard the rest of the LWO and the rest of, um, I forget stuff. Oh, Legado del, Legado del Fantasma. Mm -hmm. They were all on the outside, so of course they were all going to mix it up. As I think it was, um, Cruz who had tried to attack, uh, Ray or somebody like that. Um, which <laughs> led to, um... I was I swear because they don't because they don't get um utilized much I always forget I think it's Humberto Carrillo and Del Cruz on LWO and then Garza and shoot I forget his his name too on um Fantasma uh but it was uh Del Cruz who they were all like scattered on the other on one side of the ring and um. The other two, kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but he's like, he's standing on the middle rope, and then they like slingshot. It. 
yeah, slingshot. Thank you. <laughs> to um to like to the group who's on the floor. And I know that there's a sound effect, but if you think about the distance of where he's coming from, and he's not really getting much momentum from that, it's pretty cool to see. I mean, he's done it a couple of times, but this is the first time he has to do it on like a really big jump. So that was pretty fun to see. And it looked like um. Phantasm was on her way to get the win um, by trying, I, I, I think Dom was going for a chair where two uh, masked men came out of the crowd and took the chair and swung, um, I think they swung Dom into the, um, the, the side, the side part of the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Without the uh, referee seeing. So there, that's why they were, they were being able to DQ, uh, letting uh, LWO get the win. And then it turns out it was Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson from the Philadelphia Eagles, um, which is pretty, which is pretty fun to see if, if you know you're into football or or an Eagles fan, which a predominantly of the crowd probably would have been, but uh, or at least know who those guys are. But um, overall, the, the match was pretty good. Um, I thought we would get uh, someone turning on someone, uh, but I guess that they could be saving that for um, Friday, or soon to come to set up something down the line. But definitely these two teams are not done with each other because if you were watching up until this point, Andrade was kinda aligned with um Dom slash Del Fantasmo slash Judgment Day a little bit. And then he turned on them uh, that Friday before to side with Ray, which was interesting. Um uh, but at, at, again with that we kinda get Andrade and Zelina back together, which is kinda cool to see because they were a really good duo um back when they debuted. But like I said, overall, I thought the match was pretty good. Um, I'm kind of, in a way, I'm kind of getting tired with this feud because it's been so long. Um, and at this point, when is Ray the problem? <laughs> because I hear everyone turning on Ray, and it's like, sir, I need, I think you need to evaluate your friendship. Um, and also, you keep leaving people behind when they're standing right next to you and choosing other people. So yeah, I think I think Ray's got to sit down and think about his decisions in life. Yeah, so um, Will was saying that Carlito wanted to be on Ray's team, but Ray chose Dragon, so that's why he thinks Carlito took out Lee, hoping to replace him, but Ray chose Andrade. He also said Umberto and Garza are Legato. Joaquin and Cruz are LWO. Oh, yeah, this is a good match. Joaquin, it's always Joaquin I keep forgetting about, although, like, I know his face. Maybe because I'm so, uh, well, not, I guess by now I should be used to it because he hasn't been DJZ in so, a long time. But yeah, I always I, I know their faces and I like I know who they are, but names out the brain. Well, yeah, for me, I thought it was a good match. I re- I wasn't really interested into it, but it had some good spots. I, my favorite spot of the match is when um Ray got up on um Andrade's shoulder on the turnbuckle corner to the out, and they did a double splash or high crossbody plank crossbody um to the outside onto the two other members. That was cool as well as the slingshot. But the slingshot unfortunately was a bad camera angle, so we really didn't see. He kind of just like flew off the screen. Um, so it's probably the same cameraman that did uh, Edge's return, missing the spear on Dolph Ziggler kind of thing. But um, it was a fun match. It was good. I, I just kind of want to see Dom go over Dom go over on Ray because there's a lot of memes out there now. Like like when Ray has to face Dom WrestleMania, is he finally gonna put his son over? No, he's always gonna he's always gonna get over on his son. But I guess. Dom has plenty of time now because he is still quite young. Our next match was the brother versus brother. Third time it's happening. Or fourth if you count Undertaker and Kane. But third time where real life brothers are facing each other. Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. And Felicia knew I can only cover them when they're the Usos together. Not as Jay versus Jimmy because no one cares about them individually. Felicia, your thoughts? Or what happened in the match? Yeah, so... uh, If you can call that... This was, well, technically, I didn't get to see this live um, because our internet went out. So by the time we got it rerouted and everything, the match was over. So I did get, have to watch it from the replay. So oh, God. Just, um, you know, please have to put it back on there. Um, <laughs> but we started off with um, Jay doing a super dive off to the ring to Jimmy. Um, first, he gets action started. And then um, pretty much... Uh, after that, it was like Jimmy doing a few hip strikes and then back and forth. Like, um, uh, I, I guess we can call it we'll call it teacher music all around for everybody. And then <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, Jay had Jimmy on the fence, so to speak. I guess you could say on the ropes. Um, but Jimmy, you know, was 
on the on the team talking about he's sorry and you know we should be team again team again because that's all Jay really wanted. That's what, uh, also what the commentary team was trying to also sell to the audience at home is that Jay never really wanted to fight his brother in the first place. Uh, he just he wanted them to be together outside the bar line and just you know running people. Um, but as Jay took him up into a hug, of course Jimmy hit him with a super kick, and then um, hit him with the uh, Uso splash, only for a two count. And then um, Jay recovered from that uh, for his own Uso splash, and then got the pin. Um, and that pretty much was it. And the match, the match was fine. Uh, I think we all were expecting a little bit more for how this feud should have been, because they should have been like really upset with each other, with Jay being um, feeling betrayed by Jimmy, who you know they were supposed to leave the bloodline together and you know do their own thing. And then Jimmy, I guess, feeling betrayed because, well, Jay's getting all this attention. And uh, where does that leave him in the fold, so to speak? So this really, also for the build-up, really should have been a little bit more physical, uh, a little bit more grimy, I guess, is the word maybe we were looking for. And they didn't really give us that. And we know both of these dudes are really capable of putting on, like, really great matches, even, like, not as a team, even as, like, individual people. But uh, I don't... I don't know what happened with this, but overall, it's done. Uh, well, I don't know if it's done, but this match is done, and we'll just put it out of our minds. Yeah, uh, I I didn't like this match at all. I, I, like I said, I don't like them as individuals. I like them as attacking the Usos. Um, I, it, it, the memes were probably better than the match, because there's like two guys who, you know, are obviously real-life brothers, twins, they should probably put on a good match. They've been wrestling together so long that they can work off each other really well. But just they have, they just work with the same moveset, like super kicks and splashes. So they didn't have much to offer, and I was kind of upset about that. And it just was not a good match, in my opinion. And of course, everyone knew Jay was going to go over because he's like part of Team Cody, and they want to see that Cody's team is strong for the most part. I don't know. I just wasn't happy. It wasn't a good match. Uh, and Will says it was the worst match of the. I want to make sure if it was a night or all the rest of my year. I don't know. All right. The next match is a six woman tag team match featuring the women's tag team champions. It could be Kabuki Warriors represented by or Damage Control. Where are they? Damage Control. Or... Damage Control represented by the Kabuki Warriors who are represented by or actually who are the Kabuki Warriors, which are Kyrie Sane and Asuka. And then the other member of Damage Control is Dakota Kai. Against, I don't know. I just I don't know what their name of a tag team is. Um, yeah, Will said they should have brawled. They should have brawled. I'm talking about the previous match. I don't know what the tag team is, but I was gonna call them the Black Beauties because I think that's a great name for them. The Black Beauties represented by Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill. Uh, Delicia? I don't think they've officially named themselves as like a faction, but it looks like they are. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we got to start off, well, we can't start off without uh, in talking about how great their entrance was with them coming down, um, w would you call it an elevator or a lift, I guess you can call it, with, uh, I think they came down to Jade's music, and then it subsequently played each the other's music as they got off the lift, um, which is very uh, reminiscent of, like, if you're a Destiny Style fan, kind of reminiscent of that. <laughs> so I thought that was, I thought that was really Cool. It was one of my one of my favorite entrances of the weekend, um. But it was this was just a six women's tag match to honestly just showcase Jade. But it really was just a highlight reel for all th all um six women because of course you're gonna get Kyrie doing an insane elbow. You're gonna get Dakota doing all the kicks <laughs> that she can dish out or be allowed to dish out, and then you're gonna have Oscar doing all the hard strikes. Um, where, but you know, this was team superwoman basically. As we have uh Naomi, um, having everyone feel the glow with um, pretty much her like high, she's more, I guess you could you would call her the high flyer of the team, so to speak. Excuse me, I see. with um, Bianca showcasing her technical abilities and her strengths, and then once Jade was able to get the hot tag in. Also showcasing her strength, but um, to show I guess more of a dominant fixture again, it's kind of like a showcase, mate. 
showcase match for Jade in her, um, I guess, match debut. She did, she was also in the Rumble, but it was just, she was with, you know, a bunch of other women doing small spots here and there. Or, I guess, big spots, but, like, here and there. Whereas here, she would have to do a little bit, a little bit. Um, of course, you will see more of that when she gets her first singles match, which I would assume is coming up pretty soon. Now that she's been, like, integrated into the fans' um, eyesight, so to speak. For those who may not have been familiar with her before. But definitely, um, Jay was being booked as a star. She showcased that in this match. Again, it wasn't a lot. It was maybe, it probably would have been like three to five minutes total. Two minutes total? No, two moves. I think she only did two moves. That's what I think. Oh, okay. Um, I actually don't know the name of her finishing move. Which is basically, um, Jeff Phoenix's, um... Slam Slam. But, yeah, Slam Slam. Um, but, uh, I don't know the, the technical name of that move, or what they call it for Jade. Because I think someone else did it before as well. Um, at, recently, I think, too. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was a good showcase match. We, once those matches announced, we kind of knew what it was. It was, it was going to be the coming off party for Jade, and just to showcase these women, um, I just thought it was just really cool to see them together. I didn't know I wanted them together until I saw them together. And now I'm like, give it to my baby till one of them turns heel and then we have a match between them two because that's going to be great. And they have really good chemistry for um, not being in the ring with each other. Ever. Well, maybe not Bianca and Naomi, but like, <laughs> pretty much ever. And I actually, I really enjoyed this match. Um, I don't know what this does for damage control. Um, they, speaking of their name, their fashion needs damage control <laughs> because they've been pretty much on a, they mean, they've been on a tear as a terrorizing other women. Yeah, it's doggy. Uh, other women in the, in their locker room. But as far as like a unit and winning and I, like on TV, it's especially, it hasn't been that great for them. So I don't know how this continues going forward. Um, you know, I mean, there's still championships to be um, defended. But other than that, I'm not exactly sure how, how we go forward with these four. Because uh, I will include EO in that too. Because I just feel like we don't really have their personalities now without Bailey being their mouthpiece. So I am curious to see how they will be booked without Bailey. I guess they have Dakota... Also, Dakota also filling that role as like her mouthpieces. So as well, but I don't know. I mean, Jade, Bianca, and Naomi—they're gonna be fine. But as far as the other equation to this match, I'm not sure how damage control will rectify the situation of their character, so to speak. Do you agree? Yeah, it kind of looks bad for damage control. Um, I thought this match was awful. Uh, this match did not need to happen. They could have had as I know why it happened. I know why it was a six woman tag team match. Because they had to hide Jade Cargill the entire match until she came at the end and did her two moves to win the match um, and make her look strong. But they basically hit her because she's not prepared yet or ready yet. It, it, it definitely would have been better had it been. Well, they couldn't do this, but my opinion would have been is Jade Cargill and Naomi against the Kabuki Warriors for the tag team championships with Dakota Kai in their corner. And then have Bianca Belair face Tippy Stratton in another match by itself. And that way, you would have got another additional women's match, and we've got we would have got to see T Tiffany Stratton in a WrestleMania match against Bianca Belair, which would have been a far superior match than this. The only good part of this match is Dakota Sky getting to see her in the ring for a WrestleMania after all that time off she had um, rehabbing her leg or ACL, whatever it was that happened to her, her knee. That was great. Obviously. Naomi was great. Bianca was great. All of them were great except Jade, Jade Cargill. She came in with the last two moves or whatever it was. Um, and they're still protecting her because uh, what I'm hearing is that she's not picking up like what she's learning in the performance center as fast as they would like. At, if at all. Like she's really she, she's really lagging. Wrestling in general or more of the WWE style? WWE style. I don't think she like wrestled well in AEW. I don't think from what I hear is like she just did like slams and stuff like that. She was like the power person, which you know, which is her character, which is fine. But like when it comes to WWE, you can't, you know, you can't be like two man, like six move Cena or whatever they call him, seven move Cena. He had to he had to have a huge personality, which he does, right, to hide that. 
um, be, um well one i think what a lot of people like about jay not only not i don't really think it was her well it wasn't showcased much in it there but it was, i don't think people really was on about her about her wrestling wrestling ability they just love her charisma um and the way she carried herself i think that is um the um i'm, not, I'm trying to get the words out but like that was like her appeal I, I think her strength draws you in but her charisma and the way she carries herself kind right. of like draws to her. But that can only go so far. I do think her being in the ring with live crowds will help her. Or it might it might not. But I think that would be also a deciding factor. I, th- I, I think if the crowd gets to see what she really can do, they're probably going to be upset unless she really, you know, unless she, like that that charisma and appeal and strength and her physique and all that, it can only go so far. You know, she's got to start putting it together in the ring because otherwise the fans are going to turn on her. And say like you know you can't wrestle kind of thing, and I think that's what's gonna happen if she doesn't pick it up fast enough. The next match was for the Intercontinental Championship, featuring the Intercontinental Champion Gunta against Sami Zayn, the Challenger. Um, this match I fell asleep during, and I did not rewatch it, but I pretty much read what happened, and I know what happened for the most part because I fell asleep halfway through the match, and the match I don't know how long the match was, but um, uh. They had a really cool opening. I saw that with Sami Zayn talking to Chad Gable in the back. Then they use the, what they've been doing for many times in this new era of Triple H, uh, having a continuous, a single continuous shot of the person in the back walking through uh, the gr- well, walking through the gorilla as well as the production little area, and then coming to the ring and you know going behind the scenes kind of. So seeing him talk to Sami uh, to Chad Gable, Chad Gable was like, "It's on you. You could do it. You have what it takes." That was cool. Um, they walked out, he walked out and only to be stopped by Kevin Owens before he got to the ring, you know, before he got out of the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, curtain, uh, to say, go out there, do, do your job. And like, you know, get this done. You could do it. And then, uh, Sammy Zane went out and basically got his ass beat for, if the match is 20 minutes, he got his ass beat for 19 minutes and 50 seconds of the match. Gunther dominated with brutal clotheslines, brutal forearms. Um, brutal chops, uh, brutal power bombs, everything you can think of brutal. Like he put Sami Zayn through the ringer, like destroyed him. But Sami Zayn, much like the Philadelphia hero Rocky, would not give up. He just kept coming back. He kept like writhing in pain on the ground, but getting up, getting up, getting up because of all the training he's done with Chad Gable. He he had that heart, and he got up. He kept getting up no matter what Gunther threw at him. He got up. Until we got towards the end of the match where Gunther, I guess, was going for a power bomb or something off the top of the rope. Top rope. But um, Sami Zayn cha- reversed it into like a brain buster onto the top turnbuckle, which he used to do as El Generico, apparently. And then he hit the Haluva kick once, I think maybe even twice. And then pinned Gunther, ending his reign at 666 days. What a coincidence. Um, but yeah, that, that, I mean, even though I didn't see most of the match, I wa- like, I read about what happened and like it just seemed like what I saw happened and I... Was awake for the the end of the match, which was only the only offense Sami Zayn had, like offense, because he had counters and little comebacks, but not real offense until that. Uh, Will said this was the best match match of the night, except outside of um, the main event. Go ahead, Delicia. Yeah, I do think the match was really good. Um, I mean, if Gunther and Sami Zayn, these, I don't think these two can have a bad match, um, just because of how, just how they wrestle and things like that. Um. I was I was initially I was not really excited for this match because I um I was more interested in the Chad Gable of that was good, yeah. The Chad Gable of it all. I think that had a better story behind it. Um, but Sammy being Sammy, um he one of his best traits is portraying the underdog um in his matches and I do think they did a good job of um portraying that leading up to it. Um, I, I know some people were down because, like, this man, he literally just went for a main title a year ago, and now he's going for what's considered like a mid card title. But with it being Gunther in the long reign that he had, um, I think it definitely has impact that he is one that um, took it off of him. It was, it was funny that it was on the the day six 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 of his reign that he lost the title, but I also. I'm not too upset about it because I do think Gunther is about to be on to 
be one of the main single titles. Um, I don't know what the draft will do, but um, we'll see. Especially, especially because we have um, is it Ber- Bath of Berlin or whatever it's called? Um, and you know he's going to be spotlighted heavily for that um, PLE coming up. So there's big things in store for Gunther, and it's not like he's not going to continue to be a presence on the um, so like It's not like he's going to go away. So I'm pretty excited to see that aspect. And um, you can see, I guess, some new, somewhat new um, uh, IC uh, feuds coming up, because there's, I mean, yeah, because as they, they've been playing up some other players on Raw to potentially take on for that title to um, showcase some more matches with that. So I'm yeah. I'm intrigued to see how this goes. And up also, we're um, about to get, we're pretty much going to get Chad Gable and Sami Zayn in the ring once again after they had a really good match on Raw a few weeks ago to be a contender for that title. So I'm I'm intrigued. I don't I don't know if I will use the word excited, but intrigued to see how this plays out. I also don't think he'll have a long reign, um, maybe a few months, if that, until it go, goes to someone else. I don't, <laughs> I don't think we'll see, um, much of, like, really long, long, uh, 10 year reigns from anyone else after having exhausted that avenue with, um, Gunther. Because uh, it was, it was, like, that's not a little over two years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, a little under two years. Okay. Okay. But um, yeah. Otherwise, um, I'm I'm like I said, I'm intrigued to see how this plays out in the future. Um, Will was saying they're basically training Sammy to get destroyed by Gunther, just, just being able to sustain that beating and then come back. Uh he thinks Gunther's moving to the world title picture, which I don't know what brand he's on. SmackDown, maybe. And that's against Cody, I guess. Makes sense. All right. Um, the next match is the main event of night one, um, featuring the bloodline represented by the tribal chief Roman Reigns and the final boss, The Rock, against Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. Uh, Seth Rollins came out in some weird ass lo- robe that was longer than the Uso match probably, um, and with a giant flower, kind of like a Resident Evil final boss. Uh, maybe that's what he was going for. Uh, Cody Rhodes came out, I think normally, right? Like he came out of the elevator, but he came out normally. Um, then came the best entrance of all of WrestleMania, I think. Not not only because the Rock, I mean, I know everyone knows I favor the Rock, but it was a damn cool entrance. Like his new entrance is awesome with the, gra- the the Titantron or Jumbotron, whatever you want to call it, with the lightning. But the fact that it was like spread out looked really cool as the lightning went through. And then he walked out, and there was like fire in the front of him. Right? What the hell's that fire about? Like right? And he steps in with his People's Champion's belt. Uh, and he steps in, and then the fire engulfs him on all sides, and then like they do a top-down view, and it's actually a Brahma, like the Brahma bull uh, outline that he's standing on that's all fired out. Uh, oh, Rose got the camera. Rose got the camera, and there she goes. She's running with it. She's running with it, and she's off. But anyway, um, uh, yes, yeah, so that was the cool touch of the night, and then uh, Roman Reigns came out to his normal entrance um, tonight, the first night. The match started out with Roman and, and uh, Seth Rollins that ring the former tag team partners and faction members of the Shield. There's a lot of mockery by each member, but um, they kind of had a good back and forth until Cody was tagged in. When Cody was tagged in, um, they fought for a little bit, and um, finally The Rock was tagged in. When The Rock was tagged in, uh, the crowd went crazy, and then Ro- Rock and Cody fought for a little bit. Then all of them went to the outside. Rock and I believe. Seth Rock was it Seth Rollins maybe were taken to um um the one part of the arena like into the fans whereas Cody and I think I think I think it was I think it was was it that I forgot who do you remember who was ta- who was with whom they, they, well whatever whatever I, I I'm pretty sure Seth Rollins and the Rock were taken one way and then Cody and uh Roman went to the top of the ramp and they were fighting on the top of the ramp. Eventually, they all got back. Oh, Rock also threatened the ref not to do a count out because he'll fire the ref. They, bought, they finally got back to the ring. Um, and that, at that point, Rollins and Rock were the, were the, were the uh, legal men in the ring. Rollins finally tagged uh, Cody to come to the ring, and Cody started fighting 
Brock and Roman off single-handedly. And he hit a disaster kick on Roman as well as a Cody Cutter. Um, then uh, I think Cody hit the hit Roman with a crossroads. The ref, he went, Cody pinned, oh, what, went to pin Roman, got a one, two, and then The Rock pulled the ref out of the ring. Um, the Rock went for the people's elbow, but the, Cody countered into a Cody cutter. Um, uh, Roman went for a spear on Cody, I believe it was, and then Seth pushed Cody out of the way, and Roman actually speared The Rock, um, and then they went to the outside. Cody Rhodes hit a rock bottom on uh, rock through the table on the outside, and at the same time, uh, Rain speared Rollins through the barricade. Uh, finally, they all got back into the ring. Cody went for a uh, triple crossroads. He hit two. As he went for as he went for his third, the Rock um, hit Cody in the back with his train weight training belt. Uh, I think then Romans might have hit a spear or a or a. Um, Hit a spear or a um, Superman punch. I can't remember what it was. Rock asked to be tagged in. Roman tagged in the Rock. Rock hit a people's uh, sorry, hit a rock bottom, and then hit one of his most brutal people elbows ever because he had like stop and came down really hard at the end with his people elbow, and then um, and then uh, Roman pinned Rock. I mean, I'm sorry, Rock pick pick pin Cody, and that's your winners, allowing the uh, Roman to have the bloodline rule match. For the second night of WrestleMania, Alicia. Yeah, I actually thought this match was more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, the Rock was doing um, pretty good for um, what was it, eleven years since he's been in the in the ring in a match or something like that. Yeah, so, but the, um, I don't, I don't that, does that count the one where he did against Eric Rowan for like six seconds? You're talking about like the real match? No, that's not a real match. Yeah, and that was WrestleMania 29, which I was at, I guess. Yeah, so uh, with Rock I mean, and Roman, was, I mean Rock and Cena. It was nice to see it be taken seriously, but I guess he also doesn't want to look, you know, bad against the, especially with the other three that he's in the ring with. So I was um, glad to see that he was up to par with um, standing, being in the ring with those three. Um, them him telling the ref that if you count, you're fired. I laughed at that. That was funny. And I do agree. Um, he did. I do think he had the best entrance of um the weekend. Uh, it was really cool. But yeah, um, I think we, I think we all kind of figured once they introduced that they that bloodline rules was a thing, we were like, well, you got to now. <laughs> There's uh, no way you can't. But um, but yeah, I did. I did have a lot of fun with this match, and it. I mean, it was it was a good main event. You you agree? It was a good main event to um, end out night one and send the fans in like good spirits going into night two. And that brings us to night two, which opens with basically Seth fighting once again right after his match with the Bloodline. Seth defending his uh, is the, the match for the World Heavyweight Championship, featuring the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins against Drew McIntyre. This is another entrance match where um, Drew came out to his Scottish. I guess full piper, piping band, whatever you want to call them, bagpipers in kilts. And then as he walked past them, there was a whole, whole sword arch of people in traditional Scotland outfits, I guess, with kilts and whatever shirt it was. And Seth walked under the, the sword arch. Um, uh, and then, then Seth came out to his flamboyant self with, uh, I guess it was, they called the Philadelphia Mummers Band or something. Kind of looked like a Louisiana type of band. And that's what it seemed like. And Seth was just as one of them. Uh, when they got to the ring, as soon as the match started, uh, uh, Drew McIntyre hit a Claymore basically right when the match started, went for the pin, only got a two. Um, and Seth was really selling his knee injury that he got the night before. And once again, they can say that Seth Rollins was nowhere near 100% because you know, him and Becky can't lose cleanly or whatever, whatever it is. Um, uh, McIntyre, while he was fighting Seth, would always taunt Cody outside the ring, I don't know, Cody, CM Punk outside the ring because CM Punk did commentary as well as. Um, um, he would go over to his family, his wife and his maybe brother or brother-in-law. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, and he actually got to the, on the point. He got to the, on the phone during the match and tweeted out 
that this ma- the WWE or my work is boring right now, LOL or something. During the match, he tweeted it out, which is funny. Um, he, he hit. Uh, he went for a, a future shock, but then Rollins reversed it into a pedigree. Then hit a stomp. Uh, but he like he, as he did the stomp, his knee would give out, and he couldn't go for the pin right away. And McIntyre would kick out. Um, uh, Rollins then did the, the stomp on the announcer table, then rolled McIntyre in the ring, but um, McIntyre hit two claymores in a row to finish up the match and get the pin and that he is your new world heavyweight champion. But it's just weird that like it took like eight claymores because there's a lot more claymores in the match. Like it took like eight claymores when Seth Rollins away, but Brock Lesnar, I think Will told me only took three or four. Like that's so stupid. But anyway, uh, up to this point, Felicia, what did you think of the match? Um, when we talk about this match between the two of them. Okay, fine. I had missed the part where Drew was on the phone. So when I saw that he tweeted, I was like, does he, does he have someone, uh, uh, working his account while he was in the match, and then I saw the picture like later of him like on, uh, um, on the phone. That was pretty funny. Even the tweet after that was like hilarious. Um, but yeah, it it was interesting that like subsequently with Rollins selling the injury to his knee and back, that it took all these moves to finish him off. Uh, but I mean, I didn't mind it because I think I think this happens a lot in like Seth's like championship matches where. He's playing the I will never quit type of um or type of uh character in the ring. Um and you're gonna have to give it everything just to beat him. Uh I don't I don't think well, someone will find it. But I was like, I swear when he's champion he don't have he doesn't have short matches. So, um it was kind of I guess if you know what a Seth match is like, this is kinda of on par with that. Um, I do think that the right man won. Um, and even though he was a heel, I feel like because, well, one, you're in one of, you're in a big wrestling town like Philly, so a lot of them know the struggle and that he didn't get his mania moment that he should have had, so they cheered for that, and then, um, I don't think, well, actually, after that, I don't think he got booed at all. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was great to see him get that, that they let him have that moment again in front of a big crowd, like, a Philly crowd, or I mean, a mania crowd in general, but it is a little special when the the manias or the big or the big PLEs are in like those known wrestling towns. So after the match, you actually see um, Seth Rollins like lip to like say something to you can read his lips. Drew McIntyre says, "You really deserve this. Like, you guys, like you deserve it." And I think um, returned the respect with something he said really quickly. Then he went out, Drew went out to the ring to taunt CM Punk by holding the belt in his face and all that kind of stuff. As as Cody, as I'm sorry, Cody, I'm Cody, as Drew um, held his championship at, at the match table, CM Punk swept the leg and Cody fell. No, no, Cody. I keep saying Cody. Drew, uh, Drew fell and um, um, CM Punk got up, took out a cast or arm brace and hit. Seth in the face, uh, Drew in the face with it, and then also you hear Demon Priest music come in, uh, go off, and then he runs in and hits. I think Drew with the 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 la- the uh, briefcase, then hits his choke slam move, whatever the hell that's called, gets the one two three, and he is your new world heavyweight champion, cashing in his money in the bank contract. Uh, and so there it is. Uh, what you think, Dilly Shove? Yeah, I figured he was he was gonna cash in. Um, if he didn't, it kind of would have been dumb, <laughs> once again, if he hadn't, because, like, literally the man's laying on the floor, um, after a grueling match with Seth, Punk takes him out, for the most part, um, but yeah, um, I mean, despite Damien being a, uh, the heel that Chris Allen is supposed to be, um, it was kind of, it is, like, me personally, like, I really like Damien Priest, um, and from all accounts, he's, like, a really good dude, and he's a, he is a veteran, the man, I mean, I think he's in his mid thirties or early forties, so he's been doing this for a long time and get and getting his like, I guess, well deserved recognition for the hard work that he's put in being in WWE, and even despite them doing all these failed cash ins <laughs> since he's won the briefcase, I'm happy for that. Um, once again, I don't think he's gonna hold it that long, um, because we have a little known PE called Class at the Castle in where Scotland, <laughs> where who's from? True. Who, of course, is going to be looking for revenge. But once again, he's kind of 
getting revenge to get his moment back for a title and still and still um feuding with people <laughs> so um what i wasn't sure or clear about because i what i didn't i what i should have gone back and watched but i i don't know if this means if this means that punk is cleared or probably close to being cleared because he didn't really use the arm that was um in the brace if i'm correct right right yeah but he also said he's ready like he feels he's ready but the doctors are the one that are holding him back on this interview oh, with he's, waiting, he's waiting to be cleared yeah he okay. says he's ready okay. so um, either because clash is the july date taylor if i'm not i don't know i don't know it's coming up i know it's before summer um so either we're gonna get drew versus damien there or we'll get drew versus punk there and either one of those scenarios, I'm happy with. Uh, but I do think um, he will probably win. It will probably be Drew to win the belt back at um, Clash. But I do think that this also is a good thing for Damien because he gets to uh, beef up his heelism, so to speak. And it gives Judgment Day something to do again. Because I feel like they weren't really doing much except for just, you know, doing tag team stuff. So I guess this kind of keeps them in the mix. Especially now that he also um, Rhea retained her title as well, so they can kind of play up that. So all in all, I and think the, this is a good uh, mix of things that have happened to set up some things down the next couple of months. And they both had their, um, they both had their uh, the same title, so heavyweight champion. Yeah, and champion. also just to throw it out there, he is the first uh, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. Pedro Morales, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, so welcome Randall and Will says I have Cody on my mind. It's just Cody's been shoved down our throat for the past year, so it's hard not thinking about him. Uh what I what I could see happening uh, well first of all, Delicious made the made the made the um transition to say PLE instead of pay-per-view, because I've been still saying pay-per-view. Maybe in season eight, once season eight starts, I will start saying PLEs instead of pay-per-views, but I'm so used to pay-per-views. Um Will says clashes in June. So what I could see is happening is if Drew has resigned that we don't know yet, if Drew has resigned a contract. He will go on and beat Drew, uh, uh, Damien Priest at Clash of the Castle to win in front of a live crowd, but his own live crowd, right? So his live crowd, um, and and uh, become the new champion until <laughs> until either SummerSlam or Survivor Series when CM Punk is finally cleared and he will lose the championship to CM Punk. And then CM Punk will hold the title until Seth Rollins comes back and wins the Rumble and challenges him to face, challenges him at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins versus CM Punk at WrestleMania 41 for the World Championship. Which I hope CM Punk wins. Which I hope CM Punk wins. So that's what I, that, that is what uh, Hunter and I have talked about. Um, so spoiler here, if you see this now, you're knowing what's going to happen for the, the World Heavyweight Championship from now until WrestleMania. You heard it here first. All right. The next match was a six-man uh, Philadelphia street fight. You missed my comment before the Cody one. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Seth. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, Seth, Seth has his obsession with the bloodline. Drew has his obsession with Punk. And then also we'll, we can talk about Roman's obsession with the Shield, which will come later on. Um, but yeah, it was six man filled in for a street fight featuring a special guest referee, Bubba Ray Dudley of ECW uh, Lore. Um, uh, the match was with the Pride featuring Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, represented by uh, Montez Ford and D'Angelo Dawkins, or Angelo Dawkins, um, and against the last. Or, Final Testament or Last Testament? Something Testament. Final Testament. Final Testament featuring uh, Karen Cross and the authors of Pain represented by, I have no idea, that Razor and Akam and Razor. Yeah. All right. Akon also could be in it because T Pain was there on the other side. Go ahead, Lucia. And I've also been known to say Last Will and Testament. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, wait, so that is not. Oh, here. also on the Pride, we also have B Fab and on. The final testament we have Scarlet. Oh, and Paul Ellering. And Snoop Dogg on commentary. Jeez. <laughs> so much. Go ahead, Delicia. Yeah. No, I, I the only reason Snoop Dogg was there was to promote I is it a, I think it's a doc documentary or a new drink. I don't know. It's a drink. It's like it's probably a drink drink infused with weed or cannabis. Probably. 
<laughs> but that's why he was there in case anyone didn't realize that. Because every oh, so because every single match had a sponsor. Um, I I think that that this might have been the first time that happened where every single match had a sponsor. Because they but, changed the lighted board, the yeah, the, ri- the yeah. ring, yeah. But you know, it's it's mania. It's it, it is what it is. This is almost like Super Bowl having all those big commercials in between the plays. So I mean, you know, they're gonna make their money and. You, you just gotta expect it. it. I mean, it it didn't like take it. Well, for me, it didn't take away from the actual matches that were going on. Anyway, um, so this feud has been going on for what seems like years. Um, mainly, I think because of some injuries that have it, it's been like very stop and start. Um, so I am thinking, I hoping that this was the blow off match for all of that. Um, you know, it was a street fight, so they're gonna be fighting all over the place. Basically, is this a no D- DQ match? And is it street fights where you can where you can pin or you have to get pinned in a in a ring or that's just a false count anywhere match? I have I have no idea what the rules were. Like, it was just I think I had to be pinned in the ring. Yeah, false, no, I, mean, false? In general, I mean oh. in general for street fights. Oh yeah, actually fight. maybe street fights can be false count anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I feel like AOP kind of well. Final Testament uh, kind of was getting a little bit of the jump on Street Profits, and lastly, they tried to take Lashley out of the equation totally because he would be considered, I guess, the biggest threat, and um, they went after Street Profits to try to, um, you know, get the jump on them. Uh, but Lashley, before that, I don't remember what AOP's finishing move is, where they bump the two people together and then... Powerbomb. Yeah. Oh, it's it just called a powerbomb? Oh, it's got a name? I didn't know how to name it. I know they hit each other and then a powerbomb. That's all I know. Well, well, they didn't get to do it, so it, we, I didn't, it didn't get heard. Because Lashley came in, literally just like... Pushed, pushed him. All right. <laughs> you know, he is the almighty Lashley. Um, so, to regain the upper hand. Uh, and we did see BFAB and Scarlet because everyone's well, everyone was in their wrestling well outside of Paul Ellery, but everyone else was in their wrestling gear, so you knew things were gonna go down. Um, BFAB and Scarlet kept mixed it up for a little bit, and then them two sent them to through a table. Um, I mean they would have been a non factor anyway because they're not a part of the match. Um, <laughs> but then uh, Cross being I guess he's supposed to be like you know people getting in Bubba Ray's face when there was a near fall. Um, but then lastly, hit him with a spear, and then they set up uh, one of them, I don't know, to, one of the, the, the AOPs to go through a table, or it might have been Karen No, it was Karen Cross. It was Karen Cross. It was Karen, and the table broke. I don't know how, <laughs> because they, there wasn't much force of putting him on the table at, the, at that time, which I, I died laughing. That was hilarious. But, you know, they, if, in, in a match like this, you know, it, it's fine. You get the crowd back by getting another table after that, and to finally put him through the table with a frog splash. Um, but what they did the whole um, well, not instead of Devon getting the table, they did uh, Angelo and Lashley get the table. That, that whole spiel. If you're familiar with the Dudley Boys, you know what I'm talking about. Um, to get the table for the big frog splash, um, to uh, get the one, two, three. So hopefully, this is the end of this. Um, Oh, and also, also we we got Montez doing his like now signature, uh, flying over the turnbuckle to where the barricade is, onto somebody I don't remember. Um, but he, I think he almost I think he I think onto onto both it was onto both AOP. That's how they got taken out of the match. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Where he kind of overshot it a little bit or yeah. undershot it, one of the two. But everyone was okay, so that, that's all that mattered. Yeah, um, the match was fine. Uh, I don't think this was a mania one, in my opinion. This could have been like the main event of a SmackDown. Uh, but mainly because this feud has so many stops and starts that it kind of, this feud kind of gets forgettable. And uh, I was speaking to, on um Chase Podcast uh, yesterday. Um, that for all intents and purposes, I don't know what it is about carrying across that they can't get this dude over, um, as a heel or a face or what have you. Um, but, like, when you listen to him on, like, either his social media or in other, like, interviews and stuff, this guy has really good, like, charisma, and he's funny, and, like, 
you actually won't actually listen to him when he talks. So I don't know why that won't translate to the stream. I don't know if they're trying to make him too tough or like or too of this dominant heel person, even though he hasn't he hasn't been that dominant um in a while. But I'm not exactly sure where it's where it's getting lost in translation at. But hopefully they can rectify it because I feel like he could be a good mid carder. Um I don't see him being a top guy at this point in time. And then of course Lashley and Shutoff is they're they're all big stars, but they need something else, something better to do than what they see. So I'm really hoping this is done and then um AOP can go back to where they came from. Yeah. I this was one of those matches I want to see both teams win, but I kinda really wanted more for last testament or final testament to win be oh welcome to Sky, by the way. Uh right, well uh Final Testament because the f- I want fi- Final Testament to win because of Karrion Cross. Like I really want to see Karrion Cross get a push or be like somebody. Because I think him and Scarlet's when they first came out, it was really cool that like, like the black and white entrance with like the 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 the, the hourglass and crows or whatever happened. That was like really cool. So, and they have a really good chemistry. Obviously, they're married or whatever they are, partners, whatever you want to call them. Like that's a real cool like gimmick as well as chemistry. So I like seeing that. Maybe, maybe, and I, unfortunately, he's in a faction, but maybe get rid of the Final Testament. Have him join. Uncle Howdy in the new White Six, or whatever they, they're going to call that new thing, when uh, Bo Dallas comes back as Uncle Howdy or whatever he comes back as, have him join that because he's kind of like that mystical, having him and maybe like an Alexa Bliss and a Scarlet and all that, like having a whole mystical force, that would be really cool to see. And that's what I want to see for them. That's for the match. It was cool. I love Montez's turnbuckle jump over the senton off the over the corner thing. I love that. Um, that's about the only thing I liked in the match. Oh, and like the BFAB Scarlet Bordeaux thing with, uh, wherever her name is Scarlet, yeah, like going to, through the table and the ass, that was kind of cool too. All right, the next match features, it was just a grudge match between Max Dupree and AJ Styles. Uh, there's a lot of buildup to this match to the point where Max Dupree went to, uh, AJ Styles' house and got the cops called on him as they fought outside. Uh, match started out with, uh, Max Dupree destroying AJ Styles for a little bit until AJ Styles went for a chop block. <clears throat> then they tried to like throw each other to the outside for a few times, and then Dupree bought a bit, actually bit AJ Styles. Um, then AJ Styles went for the eye rake um, on the top rope, I think it was, and um, Dupree did an avalanche German suplex from the top, which is what like. Um, Michael Cole named it as the move happened or whatever. He's like, that's what he got from working on 2K all these years. Um, and then uh, what happened after that? Uh, oh, they went to, the, I think they went to the outside or they, 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 uh, uh, AJ hurt, uh, Capri's knee by hitting it on the, the, the ring, uh, the, the turnbuckle. Um, that's when Dupree took the cap, the, the 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 mat off the outside and went for a, I don't know, is that when AJ went for the pal jar? But you know that wasn't going to happen. Uh, he Dupree countered that into a back body drop, or was it the other way around? One one of them got um, um, oh no, yeah. So I think Dupree went for a pile driver, but you know they're not going to do that to the concrete. That's when AJ back body dropped Dupree onto the, the floor. Uh, AJ got into the ring, told the ref to count. The ref got to like 9.95 seconds, and that's when Dupree got back into the ring. AJ went for the phenomenal forearm, but Dupree went tried to counter it into a uh, BFT, but then AJ in turn countered that into a roll-up for a two-count. AJ then went again for another phenomenal forearm. That's when Dupree caught him in the air and uh, hit a BFT to win, and got, that's it, the one, two, three, and one. What do you think, Delicia? Match was fine. Um, this was one. I think this, I guess this is one of the matches I kind of wasn't like into. But oh wait a second! Did I take one of your matches? I I don't remember. I really I really don't. But, did, who covered Rollins? I think the, was that your match or my match? Sir, you asking me the wrong questions right now. I, I think, think that was your match. My fault. All right, you can take the take the take the EO and Bailey match because I. Pro- my yeah, bad. You did that on purpose, didn't you? No, no I did not. I did <laughs> not. I, I I completely forgot. I'm just kidding. I can't. Um, I, let me look at the list. I completely forgot. 
But yeah, no, I, I did, I did, I did like the match. Um, and I do think for all intents and purposes, I do think the uh, right person did win for what they were, what they're trying to do with um, LA Knight. And despite your <laughs> uh, intolerance of him, he is very behind, uh, um, over with the fans. And uh, AJ didn't really need the win. Um, but I am. In, it's interesting what he's doing with this new heel character. I think I think we need more understanding of why he's doing what he's doing, or like why he's being like heelish. Um, because after LA Knight, like what he, like what what would be the next? I guess it's going after a title. I guess but what what would be the next motivation? Um, but uh, yeah, because uh, I mean, other than that, I thought was fine. Um, I didn't quite think it was spectacular or like the worst thing ever. It was just it was very fine run of the mill for me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this new. I don't like this new Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> new intro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I think everyone said. I think Will said that last night. Um, Sky saying it now. We also agree with Sky and Will that the uh, new his new intro sucks. I like the old one. Uh, and yeah, Delicia, my bad. You didn't have Cody and Drew. I'm so sorry. So you cover EO. You cover EO Bay. I mean, it's not like I didn't get the time. Yeah, and I just I can't. I I don't know why I forgot about that. Okay. The next match was for the United States Championship featuring the United States Champion Logan Paul against uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Yeah, so this one was um, one of those matches where you, you kind of could see a uh, a reason why each one might win. Um, <laughs> and much like um, the day before where KO was wait at the at the entrance or in Gorilla, um, to wish Sam and good luck, he was re- um, returning the favor, telling him, hey, it's your turn now to get the title, so we can be like, we can be, we can be title friends. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I was telling, I was thinking saying that in the chat, I think this is the first time two challengers who weren't on an actual team or faction uh, came out together. I mean, KO, they come out first, and then he was at the bottom of the ramp, and then Orton who just hit and then he just backed up the golf truck, golf cart that he came out on <laughs> to go get Orton. I just thought that was, that was just a nice little fun touch to it. Um, but I do see them probably, possibly, um, especially with um, Waller and what's his name, Theory, having the SmackDown Titans, they probably will form a tag. They might eventually form a tag because they've been feuding with them too. So it was kind of funny to see them like come back. Anyway. I just thought that was fun. <laughs> but uh once again, oh also when Logan came out he came out with this um um what do you I guess mascot? That's the word. Mascot for Prime, who was also well which is now also sponsoring basically all the POVs because that Prime logo will be in the middle of the ring for the remainder And turnbuckles top and lower hood rock. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we'll be will be the ring sponsor. Co sponsor, <laughs> I don't know for on. I don't know for how long, um, until the I guess the contract runs out, I guess. So that little mascot was in the corner next to the whole like prime display or whatever. Um, but as we've seen in the past, whenever there was there, whatever that map, I think that happened in the last couple of matches, right? There was that prime mascot, yeah, whenever Logan, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just been so, a different person, yeah, yeah. So we knew. So, well, obviously someone was in there, but we we knew that um they were probably getting involved because this is a triple threat match which does not have um DQs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why I don't understand why every match doesn't involve a weapon, but <laughs> but that's that's a wrestling word, not really a form of this match. Um, but we did have uh KO and Orton teaming up to uh, take out Logan. Um, because he's been a thorn in their side for the last couple of weeks, especially ever since this actual match got announced by uh, Mr. Albus. Um, Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we did get, like, classic um, Orton where uh, I, I think KO had hit Logan with a, either the, the pump of hard route or the stunner, and then um, what Orton was kind of trying to RKO uh, KO, but he was like ready for it because you gotta be at this point with Orton, and he's just like, sorry, like I can't help myself. 
But also, it's a choke slam match, so that's what he should have been doing at this point. I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, but, of course, like we said before, um, of course, the person in the prime costume was going to get involved. I don't remember if this is before or after Logan hit someone with the brass knuckles. Um, I also don't, oh, it's, um, this dude called I So Speed, is that his name? Yeah, he's like apparently a YouTuber. Or, yeah, um, or, I, 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 or TikToker yeah, or something. Or yeah. Space. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was KSI, because I don't know these people, and he, and I know him and Orton, well, Orton Arcado, him the last time he was here, so in my mind, I was like, oh, it's KSI, but it was not, and I didn't know that until this morning. <laughs> yeah, and they, even though they probably said it on commentary, I just wasn't paying attention, but the, well, the Prime, I'm just gonna call it the Prime bottle, the Prime bottle pulled Logan out so he didn't get um, pinned, and then that's when Orton went out, and um, pretty much they got into each other's face. Orton just kicks him in the chest. And then, did he RKO him or powerbomb him onto the announcement? RKO him on the table. RKO him on the team. And, um, okay. Um, the okay. <laughs> and then, um, uh, Owen would do a frog splash onto, um, no, I mean, sorry. Logan Paul would do the frog splash onto Kevin KO. Uh, letting him retain his title. Um, all in all, I think the match was pretty good for the players. Again, but with the players involved, I don't see them. I didn't see them having a bad match. Uh, whether you like him or hate him, which most of us hate him, uh, Logan Paul, the person you can't deny his athletic ability and how quickly he captured the in ring, in ringness of prof- of sports entertainment wrestling at the time. And um, again. Once again, we have a PLE where it's going to be in Cleveland, and who's all over the posters is Logan Paul. I guess technically he could have lost the title and then did another another match for oh. that PLE, but I pretty much knew he was going to retain. And he just he's just such a good like good at being an asshole that you just want to keep booing him and just hating him. So I didn't mind him. Um, I didn't mind him winning in this aspect because also because of who where Orton and KO are now in their career, they kind of don't need it. Um, and then I do think they might form a tag team. Down to <laughs> they might form a tag team, and um, they might be the tag team champions. Who knows? Yeah, we need to sit. We we need to sit match between in Cleveland versus in Cleveland with uh, Logan Paul versus the Miz. So I think they're both Cleveland guys. So that would be cool to see. Um, but yeah, for me, this match, I, I honestly only wanted Logan or Orton to win. But then after Sammy won and seeing that moment with uh, Owens and Sammy before Sammy's match, and then seeing it again with Sammy and Owens before Owens' match, I was like, I don't mind if Owens wins and both Sammy and Owens hold the mid card titles. I wouldn't mind that. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. I, like Logan Paul matches have pretty much always, always been good. So. Um, I really enjoyed all those, and it was a really good match overall. I don't, I hate having these these YouTubers come out of nowhere, but whatever. I guess good for the kids. It's a good joke and all that. We had that good spot, but good to see uh, Logan move on and have to defend his title again. I was thinking, Alicia, how about I take this match, you take the final match. That way we're alternating. We never get to do that. We actually get to alternate all of night two. So do you know enough about the final match, the main event, to cover it? I could, I could, I could do my best. Yeah, so at least, no, I mean, yeah, at least this way, well, actually, we actually, you did, I did the first, you did the second, I did the third, you did the fourth, now I'll do the fifth, you did the sixth. This has never happened in Aftermath history, I don't think, where we actually alternate every match. Not that it was planned, because I mean, we're doing it now because I actually went to Gleach's match in the beginning, but then if that happened, it would have been two, one, one, two. Now it's one, 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 one. That makes it fair. All right. So the next match was for the WWE Women's Championship, featuring the WWE Women's Champion Io Sky against Bailey. Uh, Dare's Control did come out. Well, first Bailey came out with like some Egyptian theme, I guess, because she has an Egyptian park near her house. Um, Bailey, uh, Bailey was came out like on four guys' shoulders wearing Egyptian attire. Uh, then Damage Control came out and with like a bunch of like Kabuki stuff. I guess it was was that the first night or second night? I don't really remember honestly. Um, but EO Sky came out and Damage Control stayed at the top with her and then Damage Control went to the back. So it was actually a one-on-one match, which I didn't expect to see. And it was one match throughout the entire night, which I did not expect to see. 
or throughout the entire match. Uh, it's basically back and forth in the beginning. It was great action back and forth with good counters and stuff like that. Uh, EO was working on Bailey's knee. I don't know why, because her finisher doesn't involve being on the knee, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, she was working on Bailey's knee, or maybe Bailey's knee was injured earlier. I don't. I don't know because I don't. I watched SmackDown and fast forward or in, 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 on mute, so I don't know if they're even on SmackDown. I don't know. Um, but anyway, eventually they got to the outside, and Bailey um, Sky jumped from the like, top or whatever it was, and Bailey caught her and hit a spine buster on the floor. They fought on the outside for a little bit more, and then that's when EO went to the top and hit a um, moonsault from the top rope to the out to the top to the floor where Bailey was waiting, much like Charlotte does, except it looks better than Charlotte's. Um, eventually, uh, Bailey was able to take advantage and hit a sunset powerbomb onto onto the turnbuckle on EO uh, Sky. Uh, the entire time is actually funny because the, the WWE Universe was singing that song that when Bailey was in NXT was like. I want to know if you want to be my girl to Bailey. Hey, Bailey, would you be my girl or whatever? Uh, they were saying that like, pretty much the entire time, which is cool to see. Um, I think then EO hit two German suplexes, but Bailey was able to kick out. And then EO hit a moonsault um, and went for the pin, but Bailey kicked out. Then EO hit a moonsault off the second rope, but then went for another moonsault off the top rope. But Bailey um, uh, lifted her knees up. And it hurt her own knees, but it still did some damage to EO enough that she was able to... Uh, no, wait, that's when EO put the cross face on Bailey. Um, and then EO turned that into an STF. Um, and that's when EO hit the uh, moonsault and Bailey kicked out of it. Then uh, ba Scott, uh, Bailey went for the rose plant. That's what her stupid new finisher is called. But when she did that, EO like landed on her head and flipped forward. So it was a really cool counter. And that's when I really popped in real life. I'm like, oh, that was awesome. That was a really cool move. That was like the best move that that was probably the that what that was the best part of WrestleMania for me. That counter was awesome. Um and then uh then Bailey hit the the elbow, but uh uh EO kicked out. Then uh finally Bailey was able to hit the uh Rose plant and became the new Women's champion, WWE Women's champion, and it was a good, very, very, very good back and forth match. Good counters and everything, and like one one of the elbow drops were countered into an uh, into a arm bar or whatever. So a cross face. So there was really good, smooth transition, non sloppy wrestling throughout with really high risk moves, and none, none of it was sloppy. And I love seeing that. It was a great match overall. Felicia, one thousand percent agree. Um, I was a little upset that they were not getting the kind of um, build-up. I feel like people weren't really talking about this match leading up to Mania. So I feel like they both wanted to uh, prove a point. Um, and then they left it all out in the ring. And again, it's EO Sky and Bailey. Bailey, uh, I think I said it on the first podcast yesterday, she's really been the backbone of the women's division. For so long, just and ha just seeing how like consistent she is, and um, so I think for her to to get her to uh for her to get her Rumble win and then her Mania win for the um title was uh well deserved, and um, I'm excited to see her going forward and mixing up with the women on um, I guess on Smack SmackDown to you know. Hopefully, breathe a little bit more life into it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, so Will said delete, uh, that uh, Bailey was coming back from an injury, but she formed damage control, and that's why they went out. Makes sense. But yeah, I thought it was a great match. And then finally, the main event of the evening was for the WWE Universal Championship of the World. I don't know, it's got a long ass title, but let's just call it the WWE Championship. Um, featuring the WWE Champion Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes in a bloodline match. Go ahead, Alicia. Yeah. Sorry. Um, she wants me to put on pause for her and it won't mess with her. <laughs> uh, you know, it's toddler mom life. But um, yeah, so we start we started out with some really great entrances. Um, with Cody. Um, I don't know what kind of map that was that, that was that just a skull? Yeah, everyone thought it was like an homage to Triple H, but I think it's actually the skull and his tattoo that he has on his neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they were saying that because Brandy came out and you know took the 
the uh, skull and like the mechanics because I was yeah so good. It looked it was similar to where Destiny came out with Triple H. So I think that's why people were having that comparison. But um, and then Roman came out to the, I think it was like the school district, uh, orchestra for mm-hmm. the for the Philly, um, singing his um, theme song, which was pretty that's pretty nice. I love like when they get like like fuck you, when they get like local talent from that area to like perform their songs. It's just it's it's just a nice it was a nice touch. Um, and, but for the I would say like the first maybe. 10, 15 minutes, we had, like, a standard um, wrestling match, despite it's, like, the shenanigans didn't start right away with it being bumped by mules. Uh, Cody did try to take, bring out a table um, to appease the crowd, and then Roman just, like, slammed it back in and was like, nope, not doing that. So, uh, I'm, the, the little things that Roman does as a heel throughout matches isn't always funny to me. Um, <laughs> but they did wind up, like, finding outside the ring and, like, through the crowd, um, pretty kind of similar to the tag match before, but well, you know, slap people because it was one on one. Bless you. Thank you. Um, but pretty much, you know, they were using or trying to use the weapons would come into play, and then um, or or like I said, it was pre- like the first. I don't know how long the actual match was, but like the first ten minutes was kind of like your standard like one on one matches. And if you're familiar with one on one matches. He don't work fast. Like he works like slow paced matches, um, until, uh, kind of until it rubs up near the end. Um, but we did get um, as obviously this is bloodline rules, so er, members of the bloodline were gonna come out. I think first was Jimmy to um try to, I think he I think he did succeed in super kicking Cody, or sorry breaking up a um. A tag match, but then um, Jay will come out. But they did the whole wrestling trope thing where then they like if someone is in the ring kind of getting beat up, like he didn't just like come down to the ring right away. He kind of like um, was like appeasing the crowd a little bit because his music hit, and but he did go after um, after Jimmy, and then those two would fight up the ramp and then uh, conveniently put themselves through a table. <laughs> on the on the other side to take you know as far as bloodline goes to take Jimmy out of the equation, and then but and then Roman and Cody would get into it again, and then of course Solo. I think this might have been. Well, no, I think did he get involved with the tag match or no? Who? If uh, Solo, because if not, this is probably the first time he got like involved involved on the weekend. And um, he was going after Cody. And then, I don't know if there's a name for it, but it was like when Roman does spirit at the same time, uh, Solo does the uh, Simone spike. Um, <laughs> but Cody would kick out of it. And then so uh, Solo went after him again. And I think it was noted in the chat that he was wearing shoes <laughs> during the time when he's usually, you know, shoeless, which was I thought was funny. Because... <laughs> I don't know. I just find small things that we notice like that hilarious. Um, and to kind of battle that solo element, who but no one else but John Cena would appear. Uh, much to the shout, the crowd's appeasement, like they were really happy with that. To come out to take out Solo, and he hit him with the. Did he hit him with the attitude adjustment outside the ring or in the ring? I thought he hit him in the ring first, and then he went to the outside and put him on the table again. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh. <laughs> but and then uh as he's in the ring. Did he did he hit Roman as well? I can't recall. Yeah, I think he hit, I thought so I think he hit Roman in the ring and then he hit someone in the, on the table outside. It was like something like Gotcha, that. gotcha. And then as you know, he's like standing getting his adoration from the crowd, the rock's music hit and he's coming out and um he uh I'm pretty sure he gave him he gave Cena the rock off. Of course they had like a thirty second stare off. Um and then he hit him with the rock bottom, and then he had got out the belt that he was wearing around his waist, the weight, the, the weight belt, the one that has the rock on it that he was supposed to give to Cody's mom. <laughs> but uh, he was about to um, hit him with that, and I think Cody as well. I mean, at this point, like, Roman and Cody are, like, off to the side getting more rest. And then um, 
out of nowhere, I don't think we had no one has a summer bingo card at all. The Undertaker. No, 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 no. Oh no, no, you're right, you're right. Also, didn't have a summer bingo card. The Shield music hits, and we're like, wait, what? I don't know why, even though I'm pretty sure he was just on Dynamite. We were like, Ambrose? <laughs> or at least that was my dumb brain going, like, wait, what? But here comes Adam West from the crowd. Uh, the Rock is looking at the, the ramp, thinking he's coming down here. But Roman, having gone through that before with Seth coming out at one of their matches a year ago, um, he sees them coming from the crowd. Also, he's married to Shield, so he knows that's where they come from. I guess The Rock never watched the show perform before. I don't know. But he, uh, oh, he was actually looking at the crowd. He was looking at the crowd. What? Oh. He, was, he wasn't was he was looking at the entrance way. He was looking at the crowd. Then he looked at the entrance of the crowd. But not the back part of the crowd. He was looking at the main crowd, the crowd where they normally come from. Because they, they usually come out on camera, so they're coming from that side. That's the side Rock was watching. Oh, uh, okay. See, my mind, I thought he was looking at the ramp. Anyway. He might have glanced over the ramp. I take that back. He was he has seen the shield come out of here. <laughs> and um so uh before Seth can go after the rock, Roman hits him with a Superman punch, which I thought was a nice touch that Seth didn't get to do anything. <laughs> and then oh and then Rock is about to take out the belt to beat on them. And then we hear the the gong from Taker's music. Again, didn't have that on a bingo card. I would have lost a bet if I had spent money on this match. <laughs> he comes out and hits him with a choke slam. Or was it the Yeah, choke slam. The last one. <laughs> oh yeah. And then the lights go out again and then they're both out of the ring. Um I don't know if they ever show the the camera because we don't see it to the end of the match. I don't know if the rock disappeared or he was just on the side of the ring. Because I don't think they showed him again. They, they showed him at the end when he was like, rolling yeah, across the ring. I don't think they showed him until the end of the match. But, so I was like, did, did, did a portal go out? Like, did they go through a portal? Like, they just, they, they he, he, he dragged him, he, they dragged him to hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, um, well, we have Cody in one corner, Seth in another, and Roman's kind of in between the two with a chair. And he makes a split decision to not hit Cody with a chair. He hits Seth because he's rising up on the ring like Seth does, as in, like, you got to kill me to take me out. And in, what is this, 10 years in the making? Hits him in the back with a chair, as if you don't know, if you're new here and never seen the shoot before. Uh, Seth did that to him to betray the S.H.I.E.L.D. members way back when. Um, but that allowed Cody to hit 5,000 Cody cutters in uh, Crossroads to end the match. And finally, again, after what seems like 5,000 years since his teeth come back, to finish a story of winning the belt his dad never could, um, at May, especially at Mania, in front of the Philadelphia crowd, he gets to, well, I, I love to even finish a story, finish that chapter, because as Triple H keeps saying, the story never ends in wrestling. So, um, after all that, I will say, um, I did, I really did enjoy the match, um, even in the slow pace beginning, and then I do like that we have that, that kind of like one-on-one -on -one wrestling match before the shenanigans begin. Um, a lot of us, because we are rest, like wrestling fans, so we heard a lot of the rumors that there would be some, well, obviously because it's wrestling, there would be some interference, but also, like, Cody has, been, has made allies on the way. So, you know, there's going to be combatants to the butt line. It's just a matter of who. Um, even though, again, it's always, like, rumors about who's going to come out and who's going to be there at WrestleMania. You still never really know. Um, but we expected John Cena, and the rumor was that it was going to be Stone Cold. Um, but it wasn't. It was um, Taker, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, because... I, well, I guess you could pick anyone from the Attitude Era because Rock feuded with all of them. But they do have history. Uh, if it wasn't going to be Stone Cold, um, I do wish that we could have seen him still rest on it one more time. That would have been funny. But I'm I'm not mad at that booking decision. And I like the nice touch of Seth coming out in the Shield gear. And I thought I was. At first, I thought I was going crazy. I was like, "Did he reblonde his hair before he came out?" But um, 
Sean pointed out that his hair was just wetter in his match, so it darkened the blonde and then it dried out. Anyway, that was just an aside. But overall, um, I like because I know how you don't really care for Cody Rhodes, and you have a very different opinion on this match. Um, I do think story wise, for the story they wanted to tell, uh, Cody winning. Oh, my life, man, I tell you. Cody winning it was the right decision. Um, because after that, if he didn't win, there was no other point of story for him to tell. It's like, just go home <laughs> at that point, which I'm sure you would have liked. But, um, overall, I do, with this ushering of the new era with Paul Levesque, we are getting a new era of championship with Cody being the, the top guy, so to speak, um, of, and I guess the face, I guess now he is the SmackDown star, too, right? Yeah. So, uh, so too bad if you were looking for, or we'll, we'll see him tonight, of course. But, you know, he's now the, he's now the, uh, the head of the table, so to speak, in, tar- in terms of championship title. But go ahead, Kyle, take it away, because I know you're chopping at the bit to say what you- Ah, finally, this nonsense is over. Okay. Uh, well, before I start, uh, welcome Rain. Hey, girl. Hey. All right, so this was all bullshit, right? At, to put Cody's words right back at him, this is all bullshit. Um, if you are a heel, like Roman is, and he's supposed to have a wise man in this corner like Paul Heyman, right? If you're making the rules for match, and all the night before, my Cole's like, oh, now it's impossible for him to win. It's impossible for him to win. Make it impossible for him to win. Make it that he has to sacrifice a family member in the ring, in the middle of the ring, just to get a fall to be initialized. Make it so no one could could, could um interfere on his behalf. M- like make it impossible for him to win. If you control the rules to the match, you make it. If you are a true heel and have a wise man, you make it to, so it's and a final boss and all these people working on your corner. Make it impossible for the other guy to win. No way in hell he can win. You know, that's what you should have done. And they didn't do it, so they dropped the ball there. Second of all, I did call, like, a week before in our group chat, I called out how this match would end. I said, like, J- J- uh, Jimmy would be neutralized by Jay. Solo would be neutralized by John Cena. And then I said, Aust- uh, Rock would uh, eventually be uh, in- uh, neutralized by Austin. That didn't happen. It was Undertaker for some odd reason, which is a stupid reason. Uh, great. Everyone loves the pop of the Undertaker, like, gong, that's great. But that was stupid. It should have been Austin. should have been Austin. It should have been Austin. Um, and then have Seth Rollins come out and betray Cody because of him losing and him. They kept saying how many, how many times Cody has saved, I mean, Seth has saved Cody in the night before. And then he, and eventually he got so injured saving Cody the night before, he lost his title at the beginning of the second night. He should have some, you know, um, what do you call it? Like, hatred for Cody. Like, some resentment for Cody for costing him all this injury to his body to him losing his match earlier in the night. So then have him cost, you know, the, you're, you're going to see the back shot with the chair to the back of Roman, but instead of him hitting Roman, he hits Cody, and that would have been a good story. Then Roman gets the pin, and then you have Seth and Cody feud for the... the somehow the, they get the other championship and they feud, and then come WrestleMania 41, they get fight title for title. Um, now I have to, I, I, like I said, I talked to Hunter, and now that we have the title on Damian Priest, now it's going to go to Drew McIntyre, then it's going to go to CM Punk, and then it's going to set the, him and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 41. I had to call Audible there. But we had the whole plan out to all these Cody crybabies. We're bitching all this time. No need for that. Um, but you know what? What I don't like about this, like, this is all stuff I was going to say before WrestleMania, when I, if I was going to be on a Shook show, but unfortunately you guys know what happened with um, personal matters. But, um, like, they should have made it impossible for Cody to win. If you control the rules of the match, make it impossible for him to win. Second of all, it was spoiled, right? So Rock said the fans are finally going to get to see it. The night, press, night before press conference, uh, Rock said, like, you're, you're going to finally get to see Cody finish his Like, we're going to get the fans what they want. Uh, he can finish his story. Like, you know, Cody was saying that um, I, he's uh, trademarked the uh, Renaissance era uh, and possibly bringing in a new title if he wins or new look to the title if he wins. Like, all this stuff. Like, if this would never have happened under Vince McMahon, like, honestly, that's one good thing about Vince McMahon's era, like, besides the brown panties matches and evening gown matches and all that shit, like, the one good thing was that, like, 
it didn't really leak until the, uh, uh, besides the fact when that one guy in their thing was leaking to the Dolphins Reddit guy. Other than that, like it did not leak, like stuff like this. Like they weren't like hints like this. They weren't like, and like they're already advertising the night before about um, Cody finishing the story. Um, Cody finishing the story, like they're, they're having a new special on Peacock or whatever it is, or YouTube or whatever uh, on Wednesday night about Cody's story finishing and how the audible and all that stuff is called. Like, all this stuff was kind of like spoiling what was going to happen. That's why I didn't want to watch the final thing. I knew how it was going to end. Like, this never would have happened under Vince McMahon, like, with all these little leaks. Um, it, 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 I didn't see any of that, and I had a feeling of how this was going to end. Right, but I mean, like, that, they, like, and like, like, the way, like, Triple H was in the interviews and Cody was in the interviews, it really, it really did spoil it. And I, and like, maybe it was just me being th- overthinking it, maybe, but like, it was kind of out there. And like, like yeah, Sky said, no chance in hell. If Vince McMahon was, you know, like, like Austin and Rock, like when they fought WrestleMania 17, and Vince McMahon was what he thought was in Rock's cor- or, uh, corner, but it's actually in Stone Cold's corner. He made it impossible for Rock to win. You have to have that mindset going in, especially at such a substantial and significant milestone, trying to beat Hogan's record. Like, like I, like everyone, like as much as we joke about like how much I hate Cody, I don't really hate Cody. Like if you watch on the text I sent to my friend Dave. Um, that like I said, like yeah, Cody's a really good guy in real life, and I like him. He's not a bad guy. It's just I really being dislike for, dislike for Hogan. I really wanted Roman to break because no one else is gonna. I don't think they're gonna have a title reign this long ever again. And I really wanted Roman, who's gone through so much adversity in his life, you know, to 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 have that moment, a person of color, you know, to to dethrone some like an alleged racist, pretty much a racist, right? His his. Thing. That's what mattered to me. Like I saw outside of wrestling, I saw that. And that's what I wanted more than anything. And I got really passionate about it. And that's what I wanted. The, for Roman Reigns to beat Cody and beat Hogan's record. I don't care if Cody beat him later on, you know, whatever it was, if they found some stipulation or whatever, like King of the Ring gets a title shot or whatever it is, or like champion versus champion at SummerSlam, some Archers, I mean, whatever it is, they could have done that. But I wanted in my heart for Roman Reigns to beat Hulk Hogan's record, because that's what mattered to me the most. See that happen. And now we won't see it. You know? Yeah. And I, I think that's the point I can agree with you on. That's the only, that is the only reason I would have wanted Roman to retain is just to beat that record. Um, because I personally was getting kind of bored with Roman winning all the time, honestly. Or I think because there was no, they like, there wasn't anyone else built up to credibly like beat him. Um, but yeah, that was the only reason why I would want him to retain was just to be Hogan's record. Um, but I, I, I do think you make some good points. Yeah, I'm not gonna say uh, that they weren't unfounded. Um, honestly, I think I think this all came about because um, of what they originally wanted to do with The Rock, but then they had to pivot. Right. Because um, honestly, you could have had someone else win the Rumble. Uh, or I guess the plan might have could have been for CM Punk and Rumble, but then he got hurt. They called Punk. I don't know. We might never. We might not know for quite some time. Unless but, they say it. <laughs> unless they said it in a documentary. And no, the Rock. The Rock. The Rock said it. The Rock said it. It was supposed to be him versus Roman, but the difference is that you know the Cody cry babies, whatever the Cody fans, and we want Cody movement was so loud that what they did is that they they heard it, but what he says that Paul Levesque. And the new TKO board, including The Rock, what they do different from the McMahon era is they listen to it as well. The last time we heard them listen to it was Kofi Mania, right? Uh, so I can't really say that. Like I, I, I wanted. How that turned out. Well, yeah, eventually. But what I want to say is like I was so behind Kofi Mania because I love Kofi, right? So it's the same fan for same thing. I understand it's the same fan feeling for Cody fans for We Want Cody. They make you know that's fine. So like that's great. Like I can't be a hypocrite and say like great for Cody, not, like, great for Kofi, not for Cody. But like, um, I understand why it's like, it's just that there was something bigger than wrestling, in my opinion, with this whole Hogan record, and that's what I wanted to see. Nothing to do. It had nothing to do with Cody's story, which I think is stupid because like, but like Dolph Ziggler brought up on Dave Meltzer's show, like everyone has that story and that they want to win, and they have, they might have they might have a family member that did it and never won, and they want to do it. And never, you know, and might not ever get to it either. You know, not everyone, but a lot of people do have a story. It's not different from a, a lot of wrestlers with that story. Wrestling has more than one royal family, right? But whatever. But anyone, like it, you know. No, I get it. I get the it. whole story thing is for a lot of wrestlers. 
So maybe if Cody's representing all the wrestlers, fine, that's great. But I saw above, in my eyes, I, I saw beyond wrestling. I saw, like, real life. In, in sense, I'm not them fighting for real, but what I mean is something, a, a, like a thing that Hogan represents and holds there to see someone like Roman Reigns, Joel Anoa'i. Also, even though Roman lost, that does not take away the actual reign. It doesn't. It doesn't, but... That he had, because uh, no one... Um, I mean, I guess in hindsight, because we have these all these past, you know, storylines and Kansas City Lions to look back on. But, like, no one has had a reign like he's had. I mean, I know we all make a joke that he don't wrestle as much as everyone else, but also we don't want to kill him because, um, uh, just for the record, being in remission does not mean you're cancer-free. It is right. It, we are keeping it at bay. Like, he is still actively taking medication to keep this disease at right. bay. So you, you, you can't have him work. How all these house shows and right and, and yeah. that's the thing. So I I do think if I feel like if you do watch wrestling, you know the struggle he goes through. Um, but I I, I just want to say we're not. I don't think anyone wants to take away like what this man has done for the business and for his character and for um just wrestling in general. Like I and of, of course this is not gonna be the last we see Roman Reigns. Um, he might take a little bit of a break to um. From this, or we might see more. Well, yeah. Well, Triple H said he has a new story, and he's gonna drop uh, like drop uh, all our jobs gonna drop or whatever. Maybe he's the new Doink the Clown. Who knows? I, but I, I just no. I also want to say that like that record, the top three people are all golden era or prior, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's it's no one in the modern era that is gonna is in the top three, which sucks. We're gonna know squat to yeah. hold his record, but 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 also because it was a different era, it, things were run differently back then. Um, you know they, I don't because like no one's gonna beat um don't doesn't I keep forgetting which one, but doesn't like Mula or um someone else have held a championship for like ten years or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like things like that, like the that that's just not gonna be broken. But it's but also because you know we just think logically. There, it, 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 these are these are named eras for a reason, and um, so yeah, like I said, I didn't want to, I didn't want us to think anyone, I didn't want anyone else listening to think we were we were trying to take away from Roman, um, what he's done in the three years, four years that he's been champ, yeah, almost, it was going on four years since he won it back in twenty twenty, right? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, oh. so. Yeah, and then it does make it interesting to see what happens. Will he go quote unquote mad king of him not having this title right. and we can get a whole other And then burn it all down like his old friend Seth Rollins. <laughs> I, I also do wanna say what? I was gonna say, do you see him turning face in the next year? I don't want him to. I just want him to be like feel like he's been acknowledged, right? Which he does every time, but like I don't know. I I, I wanna see this I want it's interesting what uh, Triple H said, so I want to see where it goes before I comment on it. Because if it, I don't want to, take, if he, I don't want to see him turn face, but if he does a good way of doing it, right, like that might be cool. But what I want to say though is like this did supersede wrestling in the fact where like this brought like a lot of people back to wrestling, and this whole story, like you know, congratulations to Cody and all that, and and, and Roman, you know, like you saw the heartbreak he had, he hugged Paul and cried into Paul Heyman's like shoulder at the top of the ramp, like. This was huge. It brought so much, so much attention to wrestling all over ESPN, all that stuff. Even though wrestling is on ESPN once in a while or most of the time now, but um, like all the radio shows on news networks, on on um, like uh, uh, what do you call those late night talk show hosts? Like all the, it, it brought so much attention, and uh, it was a lot, right? Like so it, it, it meant like a lot to like a lot of people. And like my friend, I got to Dave who I mentioned earlier. He's never really watched wrestling before. I told him about the Logan match. And he watched it. Then he watched. I told. I've been telling the storyline about this Cody and Roman thing. So he wanted to watch. He got interested. And he watched it. And then tonight, today, he actually rewatched both matches because he found it very interesting and fun. So like, he's never watched wrestling, but he really found that fun. So like, it was cool to see that. Like, it brought that to outside things. And as much as we talk about like these people are men, tremendous, not only superstars but they're also great characters. Because outside the scenes, I don't know if people know this, but Cody bought four matching Rolexes. One that he, the only person that he told Ari Hawaii that the one that he got for was um, Seth Rollins' tag team partner on night one. 
And then Ariel asks, did you buy any more? He goes, yeah, but I can't tell you who you got him for. And then at the Hall of Fame ceremony, you see Rock and Roman with those watches on. Um, that just goes to show you, you know, it, it. they are all, it's not like they have hatred for each other and all that. It's all a story. They're tremendous actors, tremendous superstars, but it tugged on a lot of heartstrings both on both sides. And Triple H said, no matter what happens, whoever wins, someone's going to be unhappy, someone's going to be happy. And everything had to come to an end, obviously. It's just the one thing I wanted to see come to an end was Hogan's record. That wasn't done. But, you know, um, like I said, congratulations to all the Cody Crybabies, to the Cody fans out there as well. You know, and congratulations to the Roman fans as well because he put up a hell... He carried this company for the last four years. Now he puts it in... People are saying that Roman was smiling as he got that pin because it's like, finally, it's the weight is lifted. Oh, he carried the company for longer than that. But right, but yeah. <laughs> but mostly for the last four years. And now Cody, like I said... Cody didn't need the championship. He was already now the new face of the company. He didn't need the, like um, people say that the, the belt doesn't make the man. The man makes the belt, and or woman now in this case with the women's champions as well. But you know the person makes the the belt, not the belt making the person. So Cody didn't need that. He was on top of the mountain already. This is just like to give him the thank you for being on top of the mountain and being ushering him forward to the new era, the Renaissance era of what it all is. Uh, any more words for this match before we move on to our finishers? I, I enjoyed it. Um, as as soon as the, I knew about Bubba and the Rules, I said I want this to be batshit crazy, and it got batshit crazy at the end, and I loved every minute of it. That's all. Right. All right. So this brings us to our finishers. Delisha, to me, a tough, tough task with 13 matches, but what is your low point, your high point, and your overall grade? Um, I just think it's going to give the low point to the um, Final Testament Pride match. Mainly because it was a match that we could have gotten um, on SmackDown. Or or I think just because of all the stops and starts that we had with them, it just didn't feel like a big like a big deal, especially for me. Um, high point, I am going to give it to this one's hard. Can I do one for night one and one for night two? No. <laughs> Pick one, because I'm picking one. I know, I know, I know. Uh you know, you know what? Uh, I guess I just I guess you gotta give it to uh, storyline wise, Cody finishing that story that he started five thousand years ago. But um, but because in getting with it being they were calling this the the biggest WrestleMania. I don't know why they can ever. I would just say thus far because they they they, 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 they say that every year. They say that every I year. I know that's true, but um. Uh, I think it just, I think it lives up to the hype, and that's why I will overall give this paper the PLE. See, I almost, I almost caught, switched up. I will give it an A minus, um, because even despite the Usos match and despite um, Final Testament and Pride, uh, it's um, overall the card was great. The people involved were great, and we got a, it's just a lot of greatness um, that lives up to the biggest. WrestleMania, um, and it was in my city, so that that helps with a lot. No, it, it doesn't. But yeah, I think we get a bunch. I really did enjoy myself both nights. Um, I also because I also always judge PLEs on how much you keep me off my phone, and it, I was really only on my phone to like engage with the chat. So I didn't, I, or in like keeping up with like some like Twitter talk. So um, yeah, that's that's my param- some of my parameters and why I think this for me. Remember, this is our personal low highs and overall grade. Uh, why I think this is an A minus. Uh, welcome, Mr. Little Man. Sorry, I didn't get to you saying welcome while during my my uh, discourse on Roman Reigns Seth Rollins. Um, Will says low point. Usos high point was crowning a multi multiple deserving champions. He gave it an A minus. Uh, Little Man says uh, good thing Drew got his um, mania moment. Um, for me, the low point was the Usos. That match is terrible. The actual spot during the main event of the main event, I'll just say, where uh, Jay speared Jimmy off the entrance ramp to the table is better than their entire match the night prior. So, low point was the Usos. The high point, um, I wanted to say EO versus Bailey, but I'm going to be selfish here. I'm going to say the Rock's entrance on night one. That was amazing. Um, the fire and the Brahma Bull and the electricity. That was great. I'm going to say that. Overall great, I'm going to give it uh, probably a C. It was an average WrestleMania. A lot of low, ma- like a lot of 
not good matches in the match I didn't care for. Um, uh, the matches I did enjoy were like uh, the six pack, six man, whatever, six pack, whatever it's called, that the, the tag team ladder match. Um, Drew and Seth was good. Cody versus Roman was good. Um, EO and Bailey was probably the, my favorite match. Um, but yeah, so uh, with, with only being four like really good matches, in my opinion, there's probably like four average matches and then like uh, five really bad matches. I'd give it a C as an average. Um, but yeah, that was it for like that's the season finale of Aftermath for season seven, seven seasons of Aftermath. Um, we're not done yet. Well, we we do have some a few announcements I guess to make. Um, but before we do that, Delisha has. I mean, I don't think she wants to spoil the announcement, but she, what Delisha, what have you been up to? Because I know you have a new video out. Yeah, I finally been getting around to re um putting more videos on my channel. Um, I did like a little catch up uh last week. And then this week we did um our our gender reveal. It's well, excuse me here. I am pregnant with our, our second child, and just after the catch up, I uh, figured well we will um just put out the uh, gender reveal because well one can't really keep it a secret for that long anyway because I'm I was gonna too publicly say say it at, after we found out we were having it at some point. Uh, but uh, you can follow me at Alicia Renee TV where I do cover. Uh, lifestyles, motherhood, recipes, all that jazz, if you're into that type of stuff. And then, obviously, you'll see me here when we're doing um, recaps. Yep, and all her link, all her information is in the links below. And you know Delicia wanted to reveal that so badly because, like, Ryan, how how soon after you got the gender, you texted me and says, do you know I know what it is? Do you want to know what it, remember, like, was that, like, the same, was it the same day that you texted me? No, that was, I think that was the day after. Okay. Like, um, we found out, like, pretty late in the day, the day before. And I was like tired, and um, so I was just like, well, I was mainly just like we were just, we were just telling like very like close friends and family, and I was like, well, I can't leave my tag team partner Adam and Luke, so I was like, do you want to know or do you want to leave? <laughs> She's like, do you want to watch the video or do you want to know right now? I'm like, oh, either way, I'm like, I I'd I love to hear from you and Joe together, and he's like, well, he can't do it until like this time, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'll be available at that time, uh, and she goes. Okay, well, if you want to know, I'll tell you. I'm like, all right, just tell me. I'm like, just tell me what it is. So I won't spoil for you guys either. Uh, I did watch the video. It did. It, it is available on her channel, so make sure you go check it out. Uh, but yeah, um, as for me here, uh, I think the next time you'll see us is on Aftermath Awards. That's our season ending special. Well, it's our season finale, but our season uh, seven special is our Aftermath Awards, where we give out, um, you know, awards to the our WrestleMania calendar, which is the Raw after WrestleMania 39. All the way through WrestleMania 40, we're giving that like best male superstar, female superstar, NXT male and females tag teams. You know, we have some new awards to give out this year, which I thought were pretty clever names. So make sure you check those out. And if you guys want to take part, let me know if we know you well enough that you guys can join and present an award. We might have some surprises, some people showing up. I guess it's not a surprise anymore after all these years we've been doing it. But some people are showing up and uh, presenting some awards as well. And then we have a, we do have probably a, maybe a new show in the. Um, Kind of in the, in the cur behind the curtains. I don't know. We're thinking about it. It's in the works right now. Uh, that Will of Firefox, one of our stable members, gave us an idea for, and I kind of like thought about that, and I was like, oh, I ran it by Delicia. So we're gonna discuss it one last time, and then maybe get uh, the three of us to do the premiere episode on a May on a month that has no pay per views. It might be the last option next or next time you see us. So I'll still be saying pay per views, but come season eight, I don't know if I'll be saying pay per views anymore. I might have to transition like Delicia to say PLEs. Until then, guys, thank you for supporting us through seven seasons of this. Um, and we'll see you next time. Remember, keep signing the haters and be the champion of your dreams. See you later. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. Sweet Jason